We gather here today to witness this historic, historic dub. Yep. That just happened. The biggest Pokemon speedrun has been killed. It's over. Anyone trying to beat it has to just quit now. The category is done. Like, it, it's, it's unbreakable. It's unbeatable. Why? The legendary speedrunner, Pokey Guy, just beat the old world record. Not by a couple seconds, but by a full minute. 144.03. Like, what the f Thanks in part to a super risky strategy he used called Silph Bar. So people are now claiming that red any percent glitchless is just straight up a dead category because of how insane this record was. So to understand how batshit insane this is and why this run is so legendary, we got to take a look at the leaderboards. So if we take a look at the leaderboard here, for two years since 2020, Huangbro had the world record of 145.05 and the closest Pokey Guy got was 145.06. And he told me that for a four month span in 2022, he attempted to best Huang Bro's world record. He had it before, but Huang Bro got it from him in 2020. He was grinding runs. Closest he got was a second off Huang Bro. And then even the runs afterwards, you can see there's not a lot of time being shaped off. At this point, many in the community had made the claim that sub 145 was impossible. There's not a ton of time to be gained. So to understand this gargantuan journey that Pokey Guy was up against, let's take a look real quick at Huang Bro's record. The best way I could explain Huang Bro's run here is that it's just a clean run, not a ton of risky strats. Yeah, just a super clean run. So he did something called Gentleman's Candy that he does um, coming up right about here. Yeah, so in the SSN, you take a little bit of time to battle this optional trainer. You beat this gentleman, you get this rare candy, and then it guarantees you certain certain KOs in the run. Even in his commentary of this run, Huang Guerrero will tell you that he was optimizing for safety. Uh, it's better for me to take this extra trainer and get a, like a lot safer for the next few splits. Normally people don't fight at all let alone on like world record attempts. Like I wanted to guarantee a little bit more safety in the next coming splits, I decided to go for it. Pokey Guy did the opposite. So what was the strat that won? Well, like I mentioned earlier, the strat that won is called Silph Bar. But to understand Silph Bar, we need to talk about Red Bar. In, in case you didn't know, for these runs, you use Nido King as your solo Pokemon that just sweeps through everything. But it's actually optimal. And what makes this run so fun to watch is that it's best to keep your Nido Queen in the red zone like at red health. So the advantage of the red bar is that when the low health sound plays, it skips every Pokemon cry, it skips every death cry, and it skips every level jingle that normally plays. And then it also saves a frame per text box. So for example, if you were to have your Nidoking's health in the red from Lieutenant Surge fight all the way to the Pokemon tower, it would be over a minute of time saved just by having the low health audio playing. <laughs> so it was attempt number 2800 where the magic happened. And I just want to make a dis Disclaimer that it wasn't just the Sylph Bar that allowed Pokey Guy to get such a good run. The entire run was good up until he employed the strat. So important things to mention. First of all, Pokey Guy had zero extra encounters in the early game. So what does that mean? In Pokemon Red, there's some RNG manipulations that will allow you to avoid wild encounters with Pokemon, but that's not consistent throughout the entire run. It's mostly just for the beginning part. So a lot of it just comes down to luck. Why did he walk through the grass that time? Why didn't he walk around the grass? How is how is this happening? Luckily for Pokey Guy, he got um, no extra encounters on Route 1. He only got the one that he needed, which was you need one Pokemon to kill with your Squirtle so that it has enough XP to take out Brock. Next is Viridian Forest, where he got lucky and didn't get any extra encounters there. How is he getting through all of this? There's also a stretch of Mount Moon where he was able to go encounterless. Mount Moon is interesting because part of it is RNG manipulated, but part of it isn't. And the part that isn't, he got lucky and didn't get any wild encounters. Well, this is a good run. And then also the grass before Vermilion City, no encounters there. Other highlights of his early run are that he got a crit to two shot this Metapod here, which would have otherwise normally been a three shot. Nice. And then here he gets a crit to kill Voltorb. So here's where shit starts going from good to really good. Yeah, boy. So he basically has a really good rival fight on the SSN because his Needle King gets put into 30 HP. Nice. Yeah, this, part, this is great HP. So the reason why it's good that he's in 30 HP is because it's a good setup for the Lieutenant Surge fight. In the Lieutenant Surge fight, he leads with Voltorb, which has a high likelihood, if not guaranteed, to use Sonic Boom and do exactly 20 HP, regardless of crits or anything. I don't even think it can crit. Regardless, Needle King takes that 20 damage, gets put in the red at 10 HP, and that's just a really good HP that sets him up for the rest of this split. So really good rival fight, which positions him perfectly for Voltorb. Again, so the name of the game is how long you can hold Red Bar. Um, and in this case, Pokey Guy was able to hold 
gold red bar from Surge to Pokemon Tower. Now, normally if you don't get red health with Surge, you have to stall in Rock Tunnel with this Cubone in order to get him to the red. But because of the Surge fight, he can just skip right through that, doesn't have to stall, doesn't have to waste any time, can go directly through Rock Tunnel. And then again here, this next rival fight is another tough one. So fast forward to this rival fight, right? And this is actually a big run killer for him. Basically, rival blue leads Pidgeotto here. Pidgeotto can have quick attack. <laughs> He needs the X accuracy so that he can horn drill. He gets critted here, gets the horn drill, luckily doesn't get quick attack. So the reason why he freaked out there, you saw him like breathe a sigh of relief. Oh my God. Woo. Jesus. Because he took the crit quick attack and if Pidgeotto quick attacked again there, the run would have been over. But he fortunately lucks out here. So this is the first potential run killer that he avoided. So the crazy thing is, you can see from the timer, he's up like a minute 30. He doesn't have to do this self bar strat. Um, if he just played safe, he could have definitely clinched out world record just on execution alone. So fast forward to the Sylph Co. There's another rival fight here. Oh, and by the way, he goes up here as opposed to just going straight down because the rival actually walks so slow that it's faster for the rival to walk up to him, meet him here, and then walk straight to the right instead of the rival meeting him at the left or something and then having to walk all the way around. It's a, where I'm telling you, there are minuscule time saves that we're making at this point. So we enter this rival fight and you even see Amoeba UK, a fellow speedrunner, being the devil on his shoulder saying, risk it all for the unbeatable time. And that's exactly what he does, as you'll see. Now that we understand how red bar works, Sylph bar is basically in this specific fight, you're up against the Gyarados and you try to tank a hydro pump without getting critted so that you get Needle King into the red health. And then that's more time saved. So this is a super risky strat because not only do you need to dodge a hydro pump here and you see he just used Pokey Flute so that he could burn a free turn. So he doesn't get the crit here, um, but he's not even out of the woods yet. So after the rival fight, um, you might be thinking, oh, Giovanni's probably where things get tough for him. But no, it's actually right here, this rocket that has another mod that could end this whole run. So this Cubone could use Bone Club. It's a one out of four chance. Get past this Cubone, dude. Just the Cubone. I can hate the Cubone. Please don't do this. If this Cubone uses Bone Club, it straight up kills the entire run. <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. Cubone goes focus energy and the run is still alive. So he uses X accuracy so he could KO Horn Drill with Drow on Drowsy um, and also this Marowak. So another potential run killer that he avoided. And this is the, the fear of, of Sylph Bar. But again, this isn't even the last big risk to doing Sylph Bar. Okay, so we fast forward a bit to Koga Gym. Basically, Pokey Guy's been holding Red Bar ever since Sylph Co. through the Safari Zone, and up until this trainer is the last big run killer if you do the Sylph Bar strat. It's not because of this Drowsy. This Drowsy will just die to Earthquake. It's out sped, pretty easy. But it's this Hypno that if it uses Confusion, again, run is dead. It's not an Oko but he uses poison gas and you can see Pokey Guy breathe a huge sigh of relief. O-M-F-G. And he knows that he just blew this run out of the water. The rest of the run just basically goes swimmingly, but that moment right there was basically what confirmed this huge world record. I mean, you gotta see this. Like this is just him celebrating his huge dub. Chat's going crazy. 144.03, like what the f This is not a thing that was meant to happen. It just doesn't make sense. Just crazy stuff. And then immediately after he has this huge Giga Chad moment, immediately gives the post commentary for this run. All right, hello everybody. This is gonna be commentary. Pokemon Red, 8% glitchless in one hour, 44 minutes and three seconds. I just got this run like a few hours ago. Well, it just finished like an hour ago. Um, link obviously will be down in the description if you wanna check that out. But yeah, the question remains, is this new world record actually unbeatable? Pokeguy himself told me some things that he believes could be improved. He says, the only things that really went bad were I missed a few ranges on Nugget Bridge, but this allowed him to get to Red Bar for Route 25, so not even bad. Uh, he got glared by Arbok in the Sylph Co fight, and he had one single Blizzard miss on Lance, and he wasn't Red Bar when he was battling the champ, which would have been optimal. So really minor thing, 
things. I don't know without some major breakthrough how you could possibly even come close to this. So if I were Huang, bro, I'd be re-strategizing heavily right now. And you gotta know, the rivalry between Pokeguy and Huang, bro, has grown to be one of the most hype in the Pokemon speedrunning community. Both of them have been trading world record runs over the last couple of years, but that's a topic best saved for another day.